today we will discuss about a case study on lead scoring which is done with the help of logistic regression so what is the problem statement here the problem statement is there is an educational company which wishes to identify some potential leads also known as hot leads now who are these hot leads hot leads are basically the people who are engaging with the company's website videos sales calls and have high probability of converting into customers of the education company and thus bringing uh, like revenue to the company so the company wants to identify all such people who are their uh, potential customer to boost its growth now the company needs a model wherein a lead score is assigned to each of these people or these leads such that the customer with a higher lead score have a higher conversion chance means whatever score we are seeing right on the basis of the score if the score is high means there is a higher chance of that person getting converted into an actual customer so what does that mean actually when the when the sales team has the list of all this uh, lead score they can easily identify which of the customers are more, which of the people are more likely to get converted into a customer and which of the people are less likely to get converted so they can only focus on the people who are more uh, who have more chances to get uh, get converted into their customer so they will focus on them more so the ceo has given a ballpark number of lead conversion rate of 80% and the conversion rate is nothing but the probability of the person becoming a customer of that education company into 100 and the lead score is just the probability of the person becoming a customer into 100 so first i mentioned the approach in a nutshell and then i will uh walk you through the entire python code that i have written from my github so first thing first we are importing data we will inspect the data frame next uh thing comes to mind is data preparation of course because there are some categorical features some uh numerical i guess and Uh, since we are going to use logistic regression we have to encode the categorical variable so that it can be easily used in logistic regression and we ha have to handle the null values uh, which we will get to see in couple of minutes and once those things are done then we will do exploratory data analysis part of which will be univariate analysis outlier detection we'll check if there is any data imbalance or not next thing we are going to do is dummy variable creation of course this is required because there are categorical variables and we are going to use logistic regression here next is trace uh, test plate then we have to do a feature scaling feature scaling is required very much because if there are uh, some features with very high magnitude then those are going to get more significance than others in the final model so we don't want such uh, things to happen we want to make it uh, all in the same scale so that no feature get more significance in the final model just because of its higher magnitude then we will build some models since we are having so many features we have to use some rfe some uh tweaking here and there we will also look at the vif and p values and after uh, getting the final set of features we will make the final model we will also choose the optimum cutoff because it is important for log uh, logistic regression to find out an optimal cutoff which is not 0.5 all the time so we will also look into that and the last thing we will do is model evaluation like uh, what are the things we are getting from the final model and uh, sensitivity specificity all those things so now this is my github code kind of dogs are going to bark all night so <laughs> please excuse them so this is the first part uh, basically this pandas numpy matplotlib and seaborn are for visualization then we have trains based plate standard scalar for scaling 
then uh, this is for stats model dot api uh, we are importing for logistic regression model then we will also need this variance inflation factor we'll come to that later and then we have rfe we have a couple of metrics confusion metrics precision score precision recall curve and also we are importing warnings just to suppress the warnings first we are checking the data frame that we have in our hand we have a lead number we have lead origin we have lead source do not email do not call converted total visits there are so many things country how did you share about education basically when you are filling up some form in a website or something like that so that data has been collected and put into uh, a csv or an excel sheet and from there we are taking it into a pandas data frame and from there our data analysis begins so next thing that i did is First, I had a quick look at the data and now I'm just checking the number of entries we have. Uh, we have around 9,240 entries and we have mix of uh, some object and float and int, like both uh, data types are present in this data set. And I'm also checking the statistical summary of the numerical variables we have very few numerical variables and since we are going to use logistic means we have to change all of these categorical variables into numeric ones so we'll come to that in a moment next thing i did is checking the missing data percentage so this is nothing but is null with is null uh, we can do that very easily and here as you can see 0 0.01 means 1% 1 missing data is there 0.29 means 29% missing data is there and just look at the features that we have here like country like which country this custom person is from or like how did you share about x education this is like there can be a drop down or something like that and um then we have like lead profile like city and there are a couple of other things as well like do not email do not call these things are basically uh, filled up by the person and now we have the data and depending on his or her answers in that form we will try to predict whether this person is going to be a potential customer of our company or of x education or not so as you can see from here uh, we need to do encoding of categorical variables we need to do missing value handling because there are some missing values of course we have to also um, convert this select into nan because there are some features the dogs are getting getting more and more crazy okay so as you can see here we have select in some entries this only means that the person did not select anything it was just the default value of the drop down or something like that which is as good as a missing value so we will convert those select into nan or which is like null value so that's what we are doing or and we are also converting this yes no wherever we are seeing yes no to one zeros which is the easiest thing to do for encoding so whatever like this do not mail do not call search magazine newspaper article all these features i have just converted them into ones and zeros which is the easiest thing to do and the select wherever we are seeing select because the person definitely didn't select anything so we are just uh, making all those values as null values so once that is done you will see that that there are a lot of null values actually and also this is a cool way to just check the um, categorical variables 
just by select details and include object. Here we can use exclude as well which will give like except object or except categorical we can select that as well. Next thing that I did is just checking the value counts or like not the value counts actually. Yeah, value counts itself. So just trying to understand like for category since these are categorical variables and these variables have so many levels we are just trying to understand here like how many levels each categories are having and what is the percentage like what is the variance for example this lead origin has like one two three four five uh, values and among which quick add, quick add form is the least seen level Another one we can see like lead source, like there are so many lead source present. And we also did normalization here. We are doing normalize equal to true because we want to see the percentage instead of numbers. So we are just doing, if we do normal value counts, it will give in, in numbers, normal numbers. But here we want to see in fraction. So, which is uh, like easier for us to understand, that's why this 37%, for example, last activity email opened 37%. So, like that we have checked all the categorical variables. Now, I'll move on to the next one, which is basically changing, replacing, select with null values. Okay, so earlier I told that we have already changed, but that was not the case. Okay, so here I have actually changed it. And just checking out the data frame once more. Next thing is missing value handling because we have so much data missing. Now, here I have taken some decision based on this particular case study this can vary from one case to another for example here I have removed all the features completely which has more than 70% null values so any imputation uh, will not really give us any good idea because there are so many values uh, missing in this feature so whatever features are having more than 70% null values or missing values I have just dropped them straightforward and one more thing is wherever lead quality is not given this kind of tells us that um, they are not sure whoever is writing it is not sure like what is the quality of the lead because this part is uh, prepared by the sales team they have filled up this data and since there is nothing found so we can think like this is for like when the sales team is not sure so they have uh, kept it blank so we are make we are just replacing uh, missing value with not sure which will help us later we'll see that so next thing we see that there are some features with too many variations uh, too many variations means uh, the variance is so high like we cannot really do anything we cannot really uh, level them and get some useful data since these are categorical variables and for each level we have to make uh, one extra feature one extra numerical uh, column so if one particular categorical variable has like 12 labels in that case we will get 12 extra columns which is not very computationally um, effective thing to do so we have just drop those features straight forward. Next, we have done few more things like we can compute Mumbai as into null values because most of the values of city has been given as Mumbai. So this is like, it varies from one case to another like how we want to impute the missing value. Next thing is for specialization where we can see that there is nothing given, we can give as other specialization in case of missing value like we don't know actually similarly we have done this uh, 
making value imposition for the other things as well like for country all the other values are india so it's better to give india in that case now after imputing missing values as per one variable uh, as per the variables we can see there are still some missing values available in the data but not as many as before so now that we have less than 2% missing data we can uh, safely drop those rows containing missing value so i have done that next we are going to explore the data so this is the edf phase now i will take feature by feature and we will try to visualize them for converted and non not converted for example uh, first i am seeing uh, like the data imbalance part uh, where we can see like 62% not converted and almost 39% is converted or 38% sorry 38% is converted which is not the most balanced but not the most imbalanced either so we haven't done any uh, data imbalance treatment in this case now moving on to the data visualization part as you can see i have plotted lead score and lead origin for converted and non-converted and i will just read these things out because again looking at these things and trying to recollect will take time so for the first one as you can see like the api and the landing page submission has less conversion rate as you can see uh, we can just compare from here less conversion rate but counts of the leads from this are considerable the count of leads from the lead ad form is pretty low but the conversion rate is quite high conversion rate is comparatively high so lead import has very less count as well as conversion rate hence it can be ignored so lead import is not at all uh, important features uh, important level we can say so we can safely ignore that to improve the overall lead conversion rate which is our primary objective of this case study we need to focus on increasing the conversion rate of api and landing page submission and also increasing the number of leads from lead ad form because here the like comparative percentage is quite higher even though the total number is less but the conversion rate is comparatively higher for them next we can see that the count of leads from various sources are close to negligible and we can club them into others that is what this is required for like where there are so many levels for one particular categorical variable we can just club some of the levels together of course depending on the situation if they are less significant we can club them together that's what i did here and after that i plot plotted the lead source again and now see this is so much cleaner than before and also we can see that the count of leads from google and direct traffic is maximum and the conversion rate of the leads from reference and welling gap website is maximum now i'm not sure about this website but definitely the sales team of this organization can definitely look into it and they can like boost the conversion rate by highlighting these factors next i checked the outliers the total visits and total time spent on the website these are basically numerical features so i thought of plotting the box plot for these two and we can just see there are so many outliers so i thought of capping this variable to 95 percentile and next we check the total visits and total time spent on website again so now i after capping this is how it looks like the median of both conversion and non conversion are same and hence nothing conclusive can be said uh, so that's what we can see here right here for this one for total visits so this is not a very useful uh, feature uh, for lead conversion rate we can see and then we can see that users spending more time more time on websites are more likely to get converted because definitely the people who are interested they 
spending time in the website getting to know about know more about the website or the uh, facilities uh, they are providing so it makes sense that they will have a higher probability of getting converted into actual customers next we have so we can improvise the websites even further like we can make them more appealing and so as to increase the time of users on the websites because as much as much time they are spending on the website their probability of getting converted is increasing next we are checking the last activity for converted and not converted and for all the low count categories again because there are so many levels present for this uh, uh, variable we are just clubbing all together and we are visualizing it again and it, it's looking much cleaner now and the observations are something like the count of last activity as email opened is max because most of the people whose data we have right now have opened the mail so that is the last activity they did and the conversion rate of sms sent as last activity is maximum so that is what we can focus on for improving the conversion rate we should focus on increasing the conversion rate of those having last activity as email open because they are the largest number of people in this data set or people are most likely to check the mails or by making calls to those leads uh, even like can make the odds even higher and also we can try to increase the count of the ones whose last activity was sms sent next we have checked the specialization and uh, what is your current occupation as we can see most of the people are unemployed who are visiting the website but what else do we have here from the observations like looking at the plot no particular inference can be made for specialization because there are so many and looking at the above plot we can say that working professionals have higher conversion rate as you can see working professionals have higher conversion rate as the blue tar is quite higher than the uh, red one because of course they have the money or they can probably pay for the facilities pay for the services which makes uh, sense to me that of course the working professionals will be more likely to get converted and then we have the number of unemployed leads are more than any other category but their conversion rate is quite low that's what we can see to increase the overall conversion rate we can uh, increase the number of working professional leads by reaching out to them through different social sites like LinkedIn, etc. And also we can increase the conversion rate of unemployed leads. Since the conversion rate is highest for working professionals, we can try to like make all of the uh, working professionals converted if we focus enough. And also we can see that for country what matters most to you in choosing a course the city columns have most values corresponding to one value such as india mumbai as the city and hence there is no particular insight for this column because these columns do not have variance so we cannot really say anything about them next we have occupation just changing it to what makes more sense next we are up since we have changed couple of them so i am checking them again for statistical summary and here my observation is something like we can see that there are some zero values means no hence no inference can be made from these columns means uh, as you can see all the values like mean standard deviation mean 25 percent percentile 50 percentile 75 percentile max all are zero means there is absolutely no variance in this feature so we can just clearly drop them no inferences can be made from these features next i have done for lead quality and for tags as you can see here there are quite a lot of tags and 
the equality as we did this one not sure because this is the missing data we had and we just converted it into not sure but where is the converter conversion rate higher high in relevance of course this one and might be like cell team has done a pretty good job in understanding the uh, high probability or understanding the lead quality that's what we can see from here next again we are just trying to like club all these so many levels are there all together and make it just one tag one level and plotting them again this time it looks much cleaner right so what we have observation from here will revert after reading the email and close by horizon have high conversion rate so we can focus on such such people like wherever we are seeing such message so we can summarize from the whole EDA part that to improve the overall lead conversion rate we need to focus more on increasing the conversion rate of api and landing page submission and so on okay so these are the things i already mentioned i will move on to the next section now since we already visualized the data and everything we can now uh, drop the features because those are not required anymore next we will create the dummy variables because we got rid of all the unnecessary labels or there are so many labels so we reduced them into one like that now it is safe to create the dummy variables so that we will not get so many unnecessary additional columns so after that we are just dropping the actual features because those are not required anymore we'll just take the dummy features dummy columns and we'll concatenate them with the original data frame that's what i did and next thing is just splitting the data set into train and test and feature scaling of course and we are taking only the numerical features which are not labeled because labeled are already in zero and one range so there is nothing required for them so whatever continuous variable we had we just uh, standardized them next we are checking the conversion rate without doing any additional work we can see that the company without any uh, like business strategy in place it is able to get 37 percent conversion rate but now as data scientists we have to like improvise that we have to improve that and we have to achieve at least 80 percent of conversion rate so for that first what we are doing is we are looking at the correlation because this case study is based on logistic regression and logistic regression gets severely affected by multi-collinearity in data so we want to get rid of all the features that are highly correlated to each other so we can just drop one of one of these from each pair first we are calculating the correlation this is basically the linear correlation and wherever we are seeing so high correlation we can just drop them so already one feature is explaining the variance we do not need the other one in the pair so that's what we are doing here we are just dropping those and next thing is building the model now first without any extra thing we are just building a simple plain logistic regression model and this is showing all the p values and everything but this won't be any helpful because there are so many features we cannot go with this many features so for selecting the first set of features i just used rfe it was very handy since we have so many features in our hand we can just use rfe to get the first top top n features 
So for my case, I have taken top 15 features to start with from RFE and this is just giving me the ranking as well. Next, with top 15, I have built the model and next our thing, our uh, job will be to just check the p-value see for tags invalid number the p-value is really very high we will check the p-value or, or we will check the vif as well and by manually inspecting the values we can tweak the logistic regression model even further and maybe we can improvise the model a little more so we got the model and we are just checking the conversion probability we are just predicting from whatever model we got right now and first we are taking 0.5 as the cutoff and we are making some prediction because logistic regression gives us the probability not the label so we have to use a cutoff and we have to obtain the like convert status from the uh, probability that is predicted by the model so that's what i did here and next thing we will check the vif or variance inflation factor which will tell us about the multi presence of multicollinearity and from that we will tweak the model even further so that's what i am doing so here as we saw before like this particular feature had very high p value which is like alarming so we are getting rid of that feature and again we are building the model after getting rid of that feature and we are predicting we are getting accuracy and as we can see that the accuracy remains same even after dropping the feature so we were correct in doing same doing that and we check the variance inflation factor again we can see that this is in permissible range so we are good to go with the current set of features next i just wrote down a reusable block of code which we'll be using multiple times for getting the confusion metrics accuracy sensitivity all these things what did I click right now? Okay. Next, evaluating the model, we got accuracy of 92%. This is done on trained data. We have to remember that because on the test data, the performance will be a little worse than this. We got the confusion matrix, we got accuracy, sensitivity, specificity, and precision. We have to remember one thing here that sensitivity is most important evaluation matrix in this case because we want to predict as much high read as possible because that will boost our or ex education company's revenue. So we are okay to falsely predict some of the uh, cold leads as hot lead or the people who are having less probability as high probability but we don't want to miss out any any person who is having high probability as low probability so next thing is i draw the roc curve and roc curve is showing 96.96.96 uh, for training data means 96 percent is like really good value for this finding optimal value of cutoff first we started with 0.5 now I am checking for 0.0 to 0.9 like 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 like that all the values we are checking like what is the accuracy Hold on. We are checking the evaluation metrics for all the cutoff values. 
and from that from the curve we are going to select our cutoff value so this is the accuracy sensitivity and specificity curve it's almost around 0.3 or something like that we also got the precision recall curve so we are going with 0.27 so 0.3 that's what i thought but we took around 0.27 which is fine for us like decent value for us. so finally we are uh, making the pr prediction with cutoff value of 0.27 here next is again accuracy sensitivity these are on training data have i done on test data as well yes i did so for test data the performance will be a little worse than training data and accuracy means uh, accuracy of 0.81 here means 81 percent of the hot leads of the total leads have been predicted correctly by our model uh, sorry uh, that is sensitivity sensitivity of 92 percent means 92 percent of the hot leads of the total hot leads or the total people who got converted or who have the high probability of getting converted have been predicted correctly by our model and 81 percent accuracy means or 0.81 accuracy score or 81 percent accuracy means 81 percent of the prediction uh, like be it zero or one is correct of the total uh, like all the predictions made by the model and last but not the least we have made the final model with the features that we got i think 14 features because we took 15 at first and then we just dropped one because of high p value and we also got the cutoff of in 0.27 and we are getting the test data and this I did because we are uh, getting the lead score value like this. This is nothing but just the probability into 100. So the sales team can just look at this lead score and if it is near near to 100 means they have, the person has higher probability of getting converted. So they will focus more on that person. So this is the feature importance. Feature importance. So these are the final. These are the features that we took in the final model. I think it's around 14. And these are the feature importance. This is nothing but the value of the coefficients. We can take the absolute values to understand the feature importance. For example, this one has very high feature importance. So we can just sort them with respect to their absolute values and we will get which values are which features are more important so that's it for the case study and i'll just summarize what things we did basically i'll just read this out the logistic regression model predicts the probability of the target variable rather than predicting the label itself that's why we were getting the probability first and depending on the cutoff value we were uh, extracting the conversion status from that probability so that that's the first point and next is logistic regression model is used for probability uh, of getting predict predicting the probability of conversion of a customer and optimal cutoff we got as 27.27 which is um, like any lead having a probability more than 0.27 is going to be a hot lead in our model and our final model has 14 features as i told you and these are the features like do not email lead origin lead at form like these are extracted uh, as you can see because these are dummy variables as you can see from underscore and this label name is there uh, all these variables are there and then there are these variables okay obtained by encoding Okay, so top three, 
these are the top three most significant features and also these are extracted features the derived features not the original features that's what i mentioned it has uh, final model has 0.928 sensitivity model is able to predict 92 percent of the customers of all the converted customers that's what i mentioned before and precision is nothing but predicting 68 percent of the predicted hot leads are true hot leads like how precise it is in literal terms so i have also built a reusable block which will give the hot leads with like the lead score it will give the optimal precision score etc so that's it for today's case study i hope it was helpful for you let me know in the comments below like what you liked what you didn't like i will try to improve improvise on that in my next case study so that's it for today. Bye guys.